Hello. In this video, we're going to continue what we were learning in the last one about frame scripts and how to control different timelines from the main timeline. I already have a finished example. I'm going to use this to walk us through some of the different things we can do in ActionScript to control encapsulated timelines. Let's go ahead and take a look. So first, let's look at the stage. We have an object here, which is called My Ball. My Ball is, working, is moving across the screen using a simple uh, motion path. At the bottom, I have a text object, which just contains the number 0, 1. If you notice, when I go to each individual frame, it changes. So it's 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4. This is to show us what frame we currently are on when we're playing back the movie. We then have three buttons. The first one is the pause button, the stop button, and the jump button. And they all have, this, uh, they all have specific instance names that we're going to use an action script to add mouse event handlers to to control the playback of our movie. So let's go ahead and take a look at the code. The code is on a specific layer in my file here called code, and it's on frame one. So when we take a look at the code here, we'll see that we have some specific event handlers that you should be familiar with from previous videos. We're using a mouse event handler for click, and we're also using a couple mouse over and some mouse out functions. Let's take a look at the first one. This particular one is accessing the stop button that's on the main timeline. And when we click it, it's going to stop playback of the movie. So in this case, we have stop button. We're adding the event listener using the mouse event click action. And we're executing the stop ball um, callback function. In stop ball, we're then stopping playback of the particular timeline. In this case, it's the main timeline. If I had other objects that I wanted to control their internal timelines, I would proceed stop with the name of that instance name, followed by a period, and then the stop control. If we take a look at the second one, we have an instance here of the, uh, of the jump button. The jump button is going to send the playback of this to frame 15 and stop the playback. Everything else is the same as in the previous one, but in this case, we're using the mouse event click action on the jump button, and we're actually doing go to and stop instead of just stop itself. The last two are examples of how we can actually use mouse over and mouse off to also control playback. We have a pause button on our stage. When I, want to when I mouse over the pause button, I want to temporarily suspend playback of the animation. When I mouse off of it, I want to resume the playback. So in this case, I'm creating two specific actions, one for mouse on and one for mouse off. Uh, so my pause button has an event handler for mouse over. When I do this, I'm going to stop the playback. Now remember, when I stop playback, this, the playhead is at that same point. So if I want to resume it, I can use the play action. And play will then continue the, the, the playback of the timeline. So in my second example here, I have mouse event mouse off, which is then executing a resume ball function, which is then playing back the animation. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we have so far. So as you can see, the animation is playing. It's going from frame 1 all the way to frame 24, and it's looping over and over and over again. If I want to stop the animation, I can click Stop. When I click Stop, everything, everything pauses, and, I, and everything is finished. So I don't have a play, so I'm going to actually restart this uh, example here. If you remember, the pause had uh, the ability for me to mouse over it, and then it actually suspends the animation. If I mouse off of it, it then uh, resumes everything using the play action. Finally, the last example is the jump button, where if I click jump, it takes me specifically to frame 15 that we can see down here in the lower left-hand corner. I can then continue to use the pause button because it's just controlling the playback of pause or stop. So I can then control the playback with pause in conjunction with all the other actions that I have here. So all of these can actually work together, and they're not, just, they're not just isolated from one another. This last example shows how you can use a frame label in substitution of a particular frame number. In this case, I have a frame label called Glow. In my movie clip, if I had a frame label called Glow, I could actually then go to that particular frame right here in this particular command. One last thing I wanted to show you was how you can actually combine all of these into a very simplified example. Because all the different uh, event handlers I have, they're all pretty, they're all, they all have multiple lines, about four or five lines each. Some of these should be just be very basic, and they should just be on one line. 
And you can do that in this example. If you look here, I have my mouse event and my add event listener just like I normally would. But instead of having a named callback function, I'm actually taking a generic function, which is a function without a name, and I'm placing that in line with the event handler here. So instead of calling out a specific function at this point and then defining that function later on, I'm just defining the function right in the particular line. I don't have any white space characters with carriage returns and indentions and things like that, but I do have everything on one line, which is great for a very simple control, uh, with very simple um, mouse control. The one limitation with this is I can't call it from anything else. So it's just for this particular event handler. One last bit that we haven't done with our callback function center event listeners is working with the event object, which will give us more control with how we use our mouse controls. We'll learn that in the next video.